Hey Wargamers, today I want to talk about the KX-139 Taunar Supremacy Armor. That's the giant battle suit for Tau from Forge World, and the rules are in this book here, Imperial Armor Index Xenos. So, um, yeah, it's basically a giant battle suit, and uh, when it first came out in 7th edition, people were really excited about it. Uh, it really was something to reckon with on the tabletop, and it's still pretty darn good. It, got toned down a little bit, but it still packs a punch, still has a viable role in the game, and we'll talk about exactly what that is in a minute. Before I do that, though, I want to say thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell as well. That way you don't miss any of my upcoming unit reviews, battle reports, all my 8th edition stuff. So, all right, let's get to it. Like I said, the Supremacy Armor is still pretty darn good. It's about uh, 1,200 points or three Yvara's worth or two um, Sun Sharks, or not Sun Sharks, Tiger Sharks worth of points. So when we're talking about the utility of this, we want to really compare it to those other options since they feel similar roles on the battlefield. Yvara's um, are going to be more of a well-rounded smaller unit and Tiger Sharks are going to be more for uh, Titan hunting, basically. And that's really what the uh, Townar is meant to do. It's meant to take out Titans, but also just have a ton of firepower to it. And that stands out in its profile. Uh, it has movement 16, so that's almost as fast as Ivara. Um, granted, it's a massive, uh, massive battle suit, so you'd hope it'd be pretty quick, but that's pretty darn quick for something that size. Uh, weapon skill of 4 up. Ballistic skill, 2 up uh, at full wounds, strength 8, toughness 8, 30 wounds, um, 5 attacks, leadership 9, and a 3 up save. So, um, you know, again, talking about comparisons to other types of units, 30 wounds, uh, that's less wounds or fewer wounds than you would get from 3 Yavaras. It's um, about the same number of wounds that you would get from 2 uh, Tiger Sharks. So... It's like, well, it's a little bit less than, than that because they have 16 wounds. So, uh, you know, it's two less than, than two tiger sharks worth of wounds there. Um, it comes equipped with a uh, pulse ordnance multi-driver, two arm-mounted tri-axis ion cannons, four smart missile systems, four burst cannons, and crushing feet. Um, <laughs> so let's kind of parse that out and see what, what exactly those things are. Uh, the Pulse Ordnance Multi-Driver is that standard three-barrel uh, gun that's on its back, that giant gun. It is. Um, it has two different firing modes. The Concentrated Bombardment is 72 inches, macro 6, uh, strength 12, minus 4 AP, 4 damage each. And then it has a Pattern Bombardment that is uh, same range, macro 2d6, so you know on average you're going to be looking at about 7. Uh, strength 8, minus 3 AP, and 3 damage each. Uh, now, right off the bat, you should see a big um, issue with this weapon, and that is that there's almost no reason to ever use the pattern bombardment. The concentrated bombardment is, uh, you know, on, on average, one shot less, um, but it's four points stronger, uh, one point greater in AP, and one point more in damage. So, I would just stick to the concentrated bombardment. You know what you're going to get. It's you know reliable. Unless you were going to use command points on this uh, to somehow hope that you get more than seven, uh, it, it just doesn't make sense to ever use the the pattern bombardment. Uh, but that concentrated bombardment is is pretty darn good. That that's a big punch. Uh, strength twelve minus four. Uh, you're going to be wounding most vehicles. Uh, and some titans on uh, on twos. Uh, well, not twos, actually. Most vehicles, not on twos. Still on threes, but that's still a, a nice... Eh, that's, that's, a nice, that's a nice strength, right? So it's still wounding on threes, but but it's strong. Uh, all right, and then you have two tri-axis cannons. So basically, remember, everything here is going to be doubled uh, if you're firing at the same target. It has two firing patterns, a standard and a coherent beam. The standard is 60 inch range, 60 inch range, heavy nine, strength seven, minus two AP, two damage. And the coherent beam is 60 inch, heavy 3D3, strength eight, minus two AP, and three damage each. Uh, of course, if you roll one, it suffers a mortal wound because it's ion. So, 
yeah. Um, those are the basic weapons. It also has four smart muscle systems, four burst cannons. And then the crushing feet are actually kind of cool. Um, crushing feet basically are three hits per attack. So, uh, you know, it has five attacks. So 15 attacks base almost, um, or typically. Uh, you're hitting on fours because of its reasonable ballistic skill at minus two AP. That means that this guy's actually not bad in close combat. He's you know, a Titan, you'd expect that he just kind of squished some stuff and, and he can do that, so that's nice. Um, he can actually take out like a unit of guardsmen pretty easily, I think, in close combat. So that's good. You can't say that about most Tau, so that's good. <laughs> um, he has a few different special rules. One is the Vigilance Defense System. It basically allows you to use those, those smaller weapons in Overwatch, and when you do, uh, you can reroll ones. So that's nice. Gives you a little bit of marker light independence for Overwatch. Um, a barrier shield, which is a five plus invulnerable save, also good. He's going to need that because, yeah, there's going to be a lot of high AP multi damage weapons going at him. So that invulnerable save is needed. And then he has cluster shells, which basically, when there is a unit within um, three inches of him following a charge, you roll a. Uh, you roll a d6, and for each, uh, you do that for each model within three inches, you roll a d6, and on a four up, that unit takes a mortal wound. So, you know, if you were charged by a unit and there's a ton of enemies around you, uh, you can dish out a ton of mortal wounds potentially, uh, and really make a big difference when it comes to the morale phase. So, that's pretty, that's pretty nice too. Uh, I like that a lot. <laughs> um, and then it has the Towering Colossus special rule, which allows it to shoot non-macro weapons at units that are within one inch. So uh, it can shoot in close combat, basically, which is which is good. So overall, um, you know, right off the bat, you can see a lot of fire, firepower, a good uh, backbone anchor unit to an army, potentially. But you also have some options for it. Um, for the main gun, there's really no reason to ever take anything other than the uh, Tri-Axis no, not the tracks. The Pulse Ordnance Multi Driver. I get confused because there's three guns on the arms and three guns guns on the back. But yeah, the Pulse Ordnance Multi Driver is uh, by far the superior choice when it comes to a main gun. I already talked about how the pattern bombardment is practically null or redundant. The Nexus Meteor Missile System is supposed to be kind of a uh, you know is the missile variant, and it has um, a range of 24 to 120. So you do have a restricted range right you can't shoot at things that are close to you which in eighth edition is a huge deal because things are so fast um macro 2d6 strength 10 minus 4 ap 4 damage um you know i just 2d6 so you could get a few more shots but um you're restricted uh in your use of that weapon so consistently that it just doesn't seem like a viable option. All all people have to do to ignore that is just get a little bit closer to you and you can't do anything. So um, I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, and it's heavy 2d6, right? So again, you're at best getting one, or not at best, but typically you're going to get one more shot in, in exchange for that you're giving up some, some flexibility. So Again, not a not a viable option in my mind. The heavy rail cannon is the same one that you can get on a tiger shark, um, but you only have have one of it. It's range 120 inches, macro one, strength 18, minus five, 2d6 damage, and then it does the normal rail gun thing where on a six to wound you get additional d3 mortal wounds. But it's only one shot, um, and yeah, that just doesn't seem like a uh, a good use of a model that's 1200 points is to be missing uh you know missing one shot granted he does have uh two up ballistic skill and can reroll ones if you have a marker light on it or anything like that so uh pretty unlikely but if he gets some wounds stripped off of him uh it's going to be much more likely so uh one shot not not really something that i'm into i i would prefer to have something that can do more damage across more situations. So the heavy rail can doesn't seem to appeal to me very well, very much right now. Um, arms, you really, both of them are viable options in terms of what they're gonna do. I mean, the Tri-Axis Ion Cannon is, is solid, but when we think about really what would make this guy competitive, I think the Fusion Cascades, um, 
or the fusion eradicators are actually a better option. And the reason for that is because a Evara is going to be a more efficient choice for taking out things that the Triaxis cannon is going to be taking out. But other Titans, things that the Tiger Shark are going to be uh, focusing on, uh, the fusion eradicator can actually make the town R a better choice in some ways compared to a tiger shark. So um, I think I would take the fusion eradicators uh, just for a little bit of a niche definition uh, for this guy, but both of them are going to put out a punch and it's really not a wrong answer for the arm weapons, but the fusion uh, eradicators are going to give you a better punch against the things that you really are bringing the town R to deal with anyway. So uh, I would probably go with that. Overall, I think the town R does still pack a punch. It's still a viable option. But uh, if you're going against a meta that is going to have more diverse opponents than just knights and super heavies, uh, Yvars are going to be a more reliable option for you. They're going to be better at taking out infantry, uh, heavy infantry, light vehicles, Evars are going to be a good option for those. But if you are going into a meta where it's knights and super heavies left and right, uh, the town R can give you a good option. We do have to compare it to two tiger sharks though. I mean, two tiger sharks are going to do a lot of damage. That's four heavy rail cannons. And um, it's hard to ignore that fire output. Plus they allow your army to be a little bit more um, compartmentalized. So you don't have to invest 1200 points in a single model. You can have 600 points in uh, one tiger shark and then 600 points in another tiger shark and that gives you some flexibility that is not allowed with a single model. So um, for that reason I, I think the town R is a situational optimal choice but uh, overall a, a fine component of army. I think really in, in like 2k lists it's going to be too many points but uh, at larger games it's more viable. For a 2k list I think I'd rather just take a tiger shark and then fill out the ranks with with other things that are more uh, specialized or more geared towards taking out more diverse opponents. So that's what I think. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below if you're using Town R and you're just uh, you know, melting faces with it, that's good to know. So thanks for watching and of course, happy wargaming.